For performance, get Intel. That's probably the advice most gaming PC builders have been given in the last decade, at least if they weren't on a budget. Seems accepted that AMD are behind in terms of desktop performance, especially when it comes to the speed of each individual CPU core, even if AMD's processors tend to have more of them. But how do things get so bad for AMD, and why do their chips seem so inferior? In late 2011, AMD released their FX series on an architecture they called Bulldozer, which has been the basis of most of their desktop chips over the last half decade. It was, and continues to be, reasonably priced and ideal for entry-level or mid-range builders, but their chips seriously struggled to beat Intel's chips in gaming benchmarks, even with twice the amount of cores at their disposal. By the time the top FX chip was released, the octa-core FX9590, based on their slightly improved pile driver design, it could offer, at best, competitive gaming performance to quad-core i7s, but at its worst it occasionally fell behind even second-generation dual-core i3s, despite being much hotter and more power-hungry than the top-of-the-line Intel chips. So what is exactly wrong with these CPUs? Most of the answers online aren't really that great. People just seem to point to the architecture or say that Intel has stronger cores, which is true, but it's not an explanation. So here we go. This is a simplified block diagram of a single CPU core. Data and instructions are retrieved from memory, then decoded so the CPU knows what operations need to be performed. Simpler ones involving whole numbers go to be executed in the integer unit, while more complicated arithmetic operations take place in the floating point unit. Now, say we have a more complex CPU with hyperthreading, or SMT. Fetching still works as normal, but now we have two decoders to play with, so we can work with two instruction queues, or threads, at the same time. These are scheduled and executed up by the required execution units, improving our efficiency by using parts of the CPU that would otherwise be sat idle. Our single core performance is still strong as well, because if the other thread isn't in use, then we can use more of the available execution units for the main thread. Nice, but of course this is still not as good as an actual dual core CPU, seeing as the threads can't both use all of the units at once. So here's our traditional dual core CPU. Works exactly like the single core one, except there are two. Now, let's take a look at a bulldozer module. There are two cores here, but as you can see the design is rather different. Many parts are shared between the cores, such as the decoder, the dispatch, and the entire floating point unit. This can cause some inherent issues. For one, we have half the execution units of our proper dual core, and there's a sort of contest between our two threads to use the available resources. But even if only one of the threads is loaded, this can't use the second integer core, which has a big effect on the core performance of these CPUs. This, essentially, is why Intel chips with half the number of cores and hyperthreading can match or beat the bulldozer CPUs in gaming benchmarks. Users of these chips might have also noticed that Windows Task Manager lists their CPUs of having half the cores that it actually does. This is because, despite having mostly separate cores, bulldozer behaves very similar to a hyperthreaded processor, and to make better use of its cores, Windows treats it as such. AMD's approach to multithreading is what they have dubbed CMT, or Clustered Multithreading. As we've established, it uses quite a different design to your standard CPU core, but ultimately, it doesn't seem to have paid off, and sadly AMD have fallen behind in the desktop processor market. So how do we know that AMD's new line of processors, Zen, will be any better? Well of course, we don't completely, unless you're watching in the near future when it's been released, because it's still lots of speculation and loose info at this point. Always wait for benchmarks. But, Zen is designed to use SMT, so like Intel chips using hyperthreading, it will have much superior single core performance, and two threads per core, at least on some models. Zen also contains some interesting new technologies such as neural net prediction, where an artificial intelligence actually learns about the programs running on your PC and guesses which parts of data to load from RAM into the CPU's cache, to decrease delay and cause a robot revolution. So yeah, hopefully this makes at least some sense. I apologise if I've made any mistakes in this, I've tried to research everything in depth but it's complicated stuff, so if you spot anything you can tell me in the comments and I'll add an annotation. Other than that, I raise a toast to Zen, and I'll try not to burn my paws on the AMD CPU in the process.